Welcome back to Make Me A Fan. I'm the Jag. I'm Pete. And today we are recapping Bar Wrestling 49, Invasion of the Secret Santas, which as usual was a pretty awesome event. What do you think? Oh, for sure. It was uh, bar as usual for me. All right, now this is only my second time at the Bootleg Theater. And I gotta say, Pete, I love the bootleg. Number one, the Jag has seats. Number two, the Jag has air conditioning. And I saw a lot of my friends. When I say my friends, I guess I would be more apt to say our friends because they're people that the encyclopedia has introduced me to but it's nice to see some familiar faces and the jag walked in and got to give some hugs and some high fives it was a cool vibe it was a good feeling and i mean i know you got a ton of pictures of some good looking friends sure and as you say first thing we'll show on screen as well is uh so we've got juan and uh and kelsey oh they got, nice. they got their photo drawn by uh loud and noxious that's so cool and of course we have to talk about mr loud and noxious Every time I've been to bar, Melissa Santos has been the ring announcer, and last night, well, no, two nights ago. Mm -hmm. Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday night, Thursday. Melissa Santos looked a little different. It was Mr. Loud and Noxious as the ring announcer. He came out to the ring, and I gotta tell you, I really loved his approach. Different voice, different inflections, a little bit of growl, a little bit of gravel there when he's doing his announcements. I thought it was fantastic. So my first time seeing him, I had to shake his hand and tell him I think he's awesome because he freaking is. So anytime you can see Loud and Noxious on commentary or as a ring announcer, always show that man some love because not only is he a fantastic artist, because he does the art, right? Yes, he does. He does the drawing. He's a fantastic ring announcer and commentator as well. I've heard him on some of the old school bars that I've been watching because the Jag is on High Spots, right? That is on High Spots. High Spots. The Jag is on High Spots. I'm on IWTV. The best $9.99 in the biz for High Spots and the best $10 for IWTV.live. You damn right. See, there's a the thing. I mean, look. There are probably, the Jack and Throw Rocket had 10 people covering SmackDown tonight, okay? Mm -hmm. There are very few people covering the internet wrestling community or the independent wrestling of the world. So IWTV, High Spots, Fight. These are the things that I am spending my time watching in addition to, of course, WWE and a little bit of AEW. Of but if you're not watching IWTV, tell them what to do, Pete. Well, first off, we've got a promo code. It's MMAF20. You we're, damn right. We're, 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 we're gonna give you 20 free days, guys. 20 <laughs> free days of internet wrestling. The best content you've ever seen. And if you've got a problem with that 10 bucks, Talk oh. to him, talk to me, uh, tell us why you actually think that it wasn't worth the 10 bucks because you're lying. You damn you right. You spent more on coffee. You spent more today on Starbucks on coffee you damn right. than you did for a whole month of internet wrestling. That is very damn true because the Jag gets, I mean, I have a cheap coffee order, but it's about 345. So if I could give up coffee for three days to watch IWTV, it is worth it. 110% worth it, but hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you you told the people you would have I don't know if they really heard you, Pete. Tell them the code one more time. It's MMAF. Make me a fan 20. 20. 20. 20, 20 days free days. Off. 20 free days of IWTV. And I can tell you, if you don't know what to watch, the encyclopedia can tell you what to watch. For sure. But there's a lot of uh, entertainment there. There are things beyond your imagination. Indeed. Indeed. Even Cody Rhodes. I was gonna say, yeah, both bar wrestling and beyond you got, got shout outs this week on AEW. You know what that makes me feel? Because if you don't know the story by now, the Jag was a strictly WWE guy. Only a little while back did I start diving into the independent world with my tour guide, the, the encyclopedia, Pete Treras. I'm gonna say the incomparable encyclopedia, but that's a little too much alliteration. However, now that I'm up to speed, I'm hearing Cody freaking Rhodes on a bomb ass promo, by the way, mentioned Beyond, which I just started watching a couple weeks ago, and Bar, which I was standing in Bar at the time that he's making this freaking promo, and I'm like, holy crap, we are at the very place that wrestling is, 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 like they're saying that this is where all the great guys, all the people that are going to be coming up and you're going to see at AEW, WWE on NXT, places like that, they came from here. They came from Damn Bar. Right. They came from beyond. 100%. And we're going to talk about some of those people tonight. And we're going to talk about some of those people in some upcoming episodes as the encyclopedia has shown me some old school matches with beyond certain people, shall we say certain aliens, if you will. Yeah. There are people that we're going to talk about here pretty soon. But tonight, tonight we're talking about Bar Wrestling Invasion of the Secret Santas. And it took place on Wednesday, Mr. Loud noxious in the ring making the announcements and the first man out for the very first match now you've said before the first match is important the first match always sets the pace of bar guys just honest frank i've been to 40 plus bars they, it's just real talk yeah i mean if the first match doesn't if, if the first match isn't solid you know yeah then you're gonna basically it's gonna be a little bit of a i'm gonna say it's a downer i mean i i can't speak from experience because every time i've gone the first match has been fired exactly and so hey i can't talk about what it might be like because every damn time it's been freaking fantastic and this week was no different because the first man to the ring 
is our local hero, my friend and yours. Well, I think we can say that, right? Sure. I Absolutely. think I think we're friends. Brother in arms. Brother in arms, Santino alum, making his only his second time at bar, Correct. but looking fan freaking tastic, Mr. Lucas Riley. Now, here's the thing about Lucas. Now the Jags spend a little more time than normal talking to some of the guys after the match, you know, just kind of shooting the breeze and talking about different things going on in their lives. And then I think it was Kathy Campanelli said something about Lucas being so young. And I didn't realize how young this dude is. He wears a number 99 on his trunks because that's the year he was born. Damn. Does that make you feel old? Jag, absolutely. I, I, my 20th anniversary is coming up this year for school and it's like, dude, like I was finishing school when Lucas was born. Dude, I graduated high school in 96, okay? I know. 96 and 99, I'm like, oh my good, I got 99 problems and being 40 is one. <laughs> this is no joke. So yeah, he comes out to the ring and of course he's high energy, he's hype and the crowd is 100% behind Lucas because number one, he's local. Number two, he's freaking phenomenal. So if you haven't seen Lucas Riley in the ring yet, you need to take your ass to bar because I think he's gonna be there pretty regularly. And Santino Brothers is coming up January 4th. I know he'll be there. For sure. So you need to get your butt to Santino Brothers. Buy tickets right now and or get to the next bar. The next two bars are going to be back to back. Tell them, please. Yeah, the thing, uh, they're going to be New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Yes. And I think one's called Ball Drop. The other one's called Rose Parade. It is. Yes. See? Because it happens to be happening the same day as, you know, the Rose Bowl. But, Damn you know. right. And I think that's awesome because check it out. First of all, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to the New Year's Eve one. Sure. I would like to because there are certain people already announced that I can't wait to see. Chris Bay, um, Chris. Tommy Dreamer. Tommy freaking Dreamer. I love when he wrestled Tyler Bateman a couple, a couple months ago. It feels like a little like perfect. All right, I'm just rambling because there's so much. No, good there's stuff. no. You're you're totally right to say that because like uh, last year I was there. I tweeted it out and I'll I'll we'll show the tweet that I just said now. Um, they actually Russell Days did a video with Cole Cabana talking about how cool the New Year's Eve thing was. Okay. And you actually got to see it, guys. And. It's awesome. Uh, you want to be there. It's the coolest thing. Like New Year's has always sucked for a long time. Mm. You guys that are watching this, you love wrestling. Come hang out. It is the coolest thing at midnight. Everybody just has a blast. Nice. I, I couldn't recommend it. And honestly, uh, I hope Joey runs this forever. I hope nice. he runs New Year's forever because it's awesome. That is awesome. Now, I haven't seen the Wrestle Days video, but I did meet Danny from Wrestle Days at Bar on Wednesday night, and she's freaking awesome. So if you haven't followed her, we'll put it on the screen. Go follow her. Follow Wrestle Days because they're and, awesome. And as well as Keith Blomberg, who actually did all of that who's now working at WWE so nice. guys if you're enjoying the cool day in the life stuff you're seeing on the network that's Keith Keith's mm. working really hard he's running around the arenas like a hundred times wow you know uh, filming all this amazing content that you're seeing on the WWE network so Keith shout out keep crushing it all I gotta say about that because I don't personally know Keith but Keith you're freaking awesome because you did the damn thing you went from local doing something you're passionate about to the freaking E which is like the pinnacle of the wrestling world I don't care who you are you can say, oh, I hate WWE, AEW, whatever. But that's whatever. the place to be. That's the place to be. That's where I would like to be. That's where you would like to be. I'll take it. First of all, let's keep it real. I, right now, am in the training phase, okay? I'm not guessing or aiming or calling my shot for anything. But if the WWE someday called the Encyclopedia and the Jag, my ass, and I believe your ass will be there with bells on. So if Keith pulled that off, two thumbs up from the. Team. All right. So after Lucas Riley enters, the man that I didn't know who he was just a couple weeks ago, but when I saw him, my heart literally leapt with joy. Mr. Guy. Oh, body guy, yes. The I body didn't. guy, the Russ body Taylor. Guy. Russ Taylor, I was gonna say, but you said I forgot the nickname. Russ freaking Taylor, this guy looks like a million bucks. He is fantastic, and in this match, he had a little bit of edge to him this time. He had a little oh, chip sure. on his shoulder, and he was not putting up with any BS from Mr. Lucas Riley. He was gonna let him know who the man was and they had a pretty freaking fantastic match. Look, Russ, I've said it before, I will say it again, you'll see Encyclopedia's pictures on the screen, hashtag Pete's Picks. You look phenomenal, and the action in the ring was awesome. If you, don't, if you haven't seen Russ Taylor, you're missing out. I love me some Lucas Riley, Santino's local guy and all that, but Russ Taylor, my goodness, these guys were going back and forth, some serious chops, some high flying moves. I mean, you're looking at the pictures on the screen right now, they were just working. Look at that. Oh, look at that right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, tell him. Started, yeah, he was starting to actually, yeah, he ended up doing quite a vertical stretch. Uh, and then you actually see him actually pulling on Lucas's cheeks. Yes, what And of course, hell? guess who's the star of this as well? The third man in the ring. Mm, yeah. Big well, banana. Yes, now here's the other thing too. I noticed that Russ started to do like a finger break kind of thing like Mr. Pete Dunne. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, I like that. I think that's an easy way to get a little bit of heat. Sure. But um, it was cool because he did the face thing. And I mean, Russ was not to be trifled with this time. He did a couple of, uh, he's 
spat water a couple times yeah, like, at the beginning of the match, and then now he's actually got Lucas on the uh, the apron of the ring. And oh, of yeah. course, Nick's trying to call him off from that and yep. just absolutely putting in look the work. At, look at Lucas selling that. That's beautiful. Now here I will say this. One thing I was impressed with is Russ Taylor has a lot of holds. He had a lot of good, what we call chain wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. Going from move to move. Grappling. Oh, just grappling. You and can if, tell that he has a mastery of this skill. Yes, and if you don't know, you can't appreciate some of these holds, these wrist locks, these arm bars, these angles, these different, we call it joint manipulation in martial arts, the joint mm -hmm. manipulation, these different things that he's doing. First of all, he's doing it in a way that looks amazing. It looks painful and it looks horrible. But at the same time, you can tell this guy knows what the hell he's doing. So oh, it's, sure. I appreciated it. Okay, here comes the big dive from Lucas Riley. He goes diving into out into the crowd, of course, which we always love to see. Holy crap. Go back to that one, Encyclopedia. Come on. Look at that. Hashtag Pete's Picks. If you're a wrestler and we come to one of your shows, you need to make friends with this man because he takes a lot of freaking pictures and he makes you look like a million bucks. This one, we see Lucas off the top rope hitting a mad flying crossbody toward Russ Taylor. And I don't know, if I was if I was Lucas, I'd want that picture on my freaking Instagram. No, understood. It, uh, it is a little overexposed at this time. It's always kind of a crapshoot it, but you can tell the photos are just phenomenal. I mean, oh, it was, yeah. the action was here for the night. These guys came out and came hard. They did, and as the first match, as you said, it sets the tone. This one set the tone for Intensity. That's the word I would use to describe this match is freaking intensity because look at him. He's got him in the triangle there. He's put him in a triangle. Just a lot of good back and forth. And then here's the Spanish fly that they had with that where he just hit him with that Spanish fly standing. Okay, but isn't that Lucas's finisher? I think he called it the ball of confusion. Mm -hmm. The ball of confusion, which he said is a reference to a SpongeBob reference. Orb of confusion? I haven't, guys, I haven't seen Spongebob. I'm, I'm not educated. I'm not deep on the Spongebob either. There's a 99 coming into yeah. play, right? I'm not too deep on Spongebob myself. I think he called it the ball of confusion or the orb of confusion. Lucas, let us know so we can call your move the right freaking name. However, what I will say is it looks amazing and I think it was great. And uh, I like that move. And I like, see, I always think of the Temptations. Sure. Ball of confusion. That's how old the Jag is. I'm yeah. thinking about the Temptations. This man's talking about Spongebob. I'm talking about the Tim Motown, right? Yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, if you're looking at the pictures on the screen, of course, they kept going. Nick's killing it in there, doing his thing. And in the end, yeah. what happened in the end? Russ got him with a submission. Oh, yeah, submission. I don't know what it's called. Russ let us know. But he put him in a submission, tapped him out. Look at that face. Russ Taylor is a freaking star. Look at that body. Come on, man. I mean, look, Russ, Gabe, I appreciate what you did in the ring. I appreciate what you do in the gym. And I appreciate what you're doing for us at Bar Wrestling. So that was a hell of a match. And even though Lucas didn't get the W, he still came out looking better for it, I think. Oh, for sure. Lucas looked great. Fantastic match. I mean, I can't say enough good things about Lucas or Russ Taylor. I feel like every time we do this, it's like a giant love fest. Sure, no, I, it, but you gotta remember that this is also some of the best and the brightest in wrestling. True. You get to see. Uh, Which is why I, Cody's I, talking about it on AEW. I completely agree. Again, I look at this as like Groundlings or Second City or anything else like that, where mm. you have a cavalcade of amazing actors, in this case wrestlers, yeah. that come out and just put on an amazing show. You put two people together, put four people together, six yeah. people together. We have all that over the course of tonight. And guess yeah. what? Every single time, every combination, phenomenal. I'm going to tell you something. This is kind of off topic, but just bear with me for a second. I have a good friend who lives in Kansas. He lives in Lawrence, Kansas, mm -hmm. okay? And I love him. And we talk about every once in a while, me and the wife will, will threaten to move somewhere else with cheaper housing, less traffic and whatever. Sure. And so I'm like, yo, and then I'm thinking about wrestling because we're going to wrestling school and we're pursuing this dream and all that. And I'm like, there ain't crap in Lawrence freaking Kansas. Right. There's no bar in Lawrence, Kansas. There's no freaking Santino's in Lawrence, Kansas. There's no freaking Ground Zero an hour drive away. There's no, I mean, come on, man. Right. No you PWG. can't get that crap anywhere but here. And bar is one of the most consistent twice monthly shows in the world and the everybody quality. wants to go there everybody wants to be on the show and they should because it's freaking fantastic the quality is good and it never 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 ceases to entertain us so this match was fantastic lucas you're the man we love you um i bought a couple stickers from lucas to support you i should have bought more but hey next time my friend you need some shirts man you need some three x's for the jack but I mean, hopefully I need, I need to get down there too. <laughs> but anyway, so where do they find us on social media? At MakeMeAFan316 on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. And I need you to do us a favor. I need you to look down below this video. Right there. There's a little button that says subscribe. I need you to hit the bionic elbow right on that button. You gotta smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you get all the notifications you're aware when a new video comes out. Of course, you gotta ring the bell, which is right down there, right next to the subscribe button, I believe. Absolutely. And that will give you an alert whenever time, when anytime a new video is posted. But the encyclopedia said it last time, you gotta tell them again. 
Every day we put out content, what time, Pete? 9 p.m., 9 a.m., every day Pacific and noon Eastern. You damn right, so you can watch us on your lunch break or you can watch us when you get to work and you don't wanna work yet. Because I know when I get to work, I don't wanna work just yet, so I might as well watch five minutes of fantastic wrestling talk and wrestling culture from the JAG and the encyclopedia. I mixed that up. He's the encyclopedia, I'm the JAG, and we will see you tomorrow.